Uh, last week, I did a workshop on uh, composition editing and, and photographic art. And one of the things that came out of that workshop is I realized that I haven't actually covered masking in like a really introductory to beginning uh, beginner level tutorial. And so I wanted to take that opportunity basically to structure how masking works really directed towards people that are new to ACDC. So I've created a tutorial series on that. And so this first, uh, I guess, episode in the series will be covering um, looking at masking from selections. In the next tutorial in the series, which will be coming out next week, we'll look at uh, masking uh, from layers themselves. And then in the last tutorial, we'll look at creating essentially, uh, you know, our own photographic art or practical application of masking. Enjoy the tutorial. Notice that I'm in edit mode with two images in my layer panel. Both are solid color layers. Uh, one is red, located on the top of my layer order, and the other one is blue, and it's located beneath the red layer. Layer order matters in ACDC, with the top layer being the one presented to you, barring any opacity adjustments, active blending, or masks, which is exactly the subject of this tutorial. You can mask in two ways. The first is by making a selection with one of the selection tools and then clicking on the mask button. This is the one we'll cover in this tutorial. You can also add a mask to your layer and then make the selection after the fact, which is what we'll cover in the next tutorial. So what is a mask? If you've used edit mode before, you've seen a mask. They appear next to every adjustment layer filter. For example, here's an exposure adjustment. The adjustment lets me change the exposure. In this case, I'll reduce it. But the mask itself, this little box called a thumbnail next to the word exposure, tells me where the effect is actually being applied. Most masks begin as white boxes. When masking, a white thumbnail box tells me that the effect is applied. Inversely, a black thumbnail box tells me that the effect is turned off. This is a key concept about masks. When interacting with them, you are either turning them off or on. White meaning on, black meaning off. Let's take this fact a bit further. I'll delete my exposure adjustment to keep things nice and simple. Remember when I said that you can apply a mask in two ways? Let's illustrate this. We're going to begin by using the rectangular selection tool. I'll make a selection. Active selections are illustrated by this black and white marquee called marching ants. I can turn this active selection into a mask by clicking the add a layer mask button on the bottom of the layer panel. Instantly, you'll see a change in our image. Let's refer to the mask thumbnail to see what has happened. My thumbnail shows that my rectangular selection has been made white, while the space around it has been made black. In effect, we can see the white part because it's turned on, and we can't see the black part because it's turned off. When we can't see a part of a layer, the layer directly underneath of it is shown instead, hence why we see a blue background around our red block. What would happen if the blue box wasn't there? Well, if we remove it or hide it, like I'm about to do, we are shown a transparency. A transparency, as illustrated by this checkerboard, is just a space that contains no pixel information at all. It would be the same if we take a layer and decrease the opacity to zero. Okay, one more thing. If I click on my thumbnail mask, its properties pop up. I can invert this mask using the button here, and you can see that the white and black, the shown and hidden components of my layer are flipped. In the next tutorial in this series, I'll show you the second method of adding a mask, and then we'll illustrate its more practical uses. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like, click the bell icon. That'll notify you when we upload new videos.